let's look at an introduction to the F distribution. The F distribution is related to the chi-square distribution. Let's take a bit of a closer look at that. Suppose we let the random variable u1 have a chi-square distribution with nu1 degrees of freedom. This is the Greek letter nu, in case you have not encountered that before. And we're going to let the random variable u2 have a chi-square distribution with nu2 degrees of freedom. And we're going to let u1 and u2 be independent random variables. Now, if we define a new random variable here, u1 over its degrees of freedom, nu1, and we divide the whole thing by u2 over its degrees of freedom, nu2, or in other words, the ratio of two independent chi-square random variables over their degrees of freedom, then we're going to call this an F, because this has an F distribution. That has an F distribution with degrees of freedom in the numerator of nu1, so nu1 degrees of freedom in the numerator, and nu2 degrees of freedom in the denominator. So I'm just going to say has an F distribution with nu1 and nu2 degrees of freedom. A major implication of this is that the F distribution often arises when we are working with ratios of variances, and we do that very frequently in different statistical inference procedures. So the F distribution does arise in a lot of spots for us. Here's the probability density function of the F distribution with the two parameters nu1, the degrees of freedom in the numerator, and nu2, the degrees of freedom in the denominator. Now, we're not going to be working with the PDF directly very often, but one thing to keep in mind is that that F random variable was a ratio of two non-negative quantities, and as such, an F random variable is not going to take on negative values. Here's the PDF plotted out for three different sets of degrees of freedom. One of the first things we might note here is that we do have some right skewness to this distribution. And another thing we might note, if we look at this white line, which is an F distribution with three degrees of freedom in the numerator and eight in the denominator, is different from this red line, which is an F distribution with eight degrees of freedom in the numerator and three with the denominator. So the distribution is different when we flip the degrees of freedom around. Now it can be shown that the mean of an F distribution is equal to the degrees of freedom in the denominator over the degrees of freedom in the denominator minus 2 for cases where the degrees of freedom in the denominator is greater than 2. So for instance, in this green F distribution, which has 20 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 20 in the denominator, the mean here is going to be 20, the degrees of freedom in the denominator, over 18. The median of the F distribution depends on the degrees of freedom as well. When the degrees of freedom are equal in the numerator and the denominator, then the median is equal to exactly 1. So in the case here, where the degrees of freedom in the numerator and the denominator were equal, the median is equal to exactly 1. When the degrees of freedom are different, like when we had 8 and 3 degrees of freedom, or 3 and 8, the median isn't going to be exactly 1, but it's going to be roughly somewhere in the neighborhood of 1. Later on, when we're carrying out our statistical inference procedures, we're going to need to find areas under the curve, as well as various percentiles for our distribution. Now, this F distribution must be integrated numerically, so we're going to have to use computer software to get these values, or use an F table. 